We're here in Midtown for the Silicon Dragon Forum, where entrepreneurs and investors meet to discuss, for one, the innovations and possibilities coming out of China. This year at Silicon Dragon, e-commerce and technology are hot topics as Asian countries such as India and Greater China are demonstrating the increasingly global potential of their innovations in the mobile industry. Asia is where so much of the startup activity is. I think they're very good at monetization models and better than we are here in the West. Chinese technology innovation is entering the global stage in a big way. There are several companies that are starting to become multi-geography winners coming out of China. People who have worked at those companies have then left and started their own startups and now those companies are really innovating on a global stage. Uh, anything to do with mobile is really, really hot, particularly in China and India, because uh, China and India skipped right over the PC generation, went right directly to mobile. Although innovation is happening globally, sometimes geography does matter. Vicky Wu is the co-founder of Zaozao, a travel-inspired e-commerce website selling the products of up-and-coming Asian designers to a predominantly Western consumer body. Although Zaozao is all about Asian innovation, their New York address alone has proved a powerful tool as they enter the Asian market. So Asian people don't buy Asian stuff. People didn't understand why would I pay, you know, $100 for a clutch that's made by a designer that lives in the same city as me. Why would I do that? I can just buy something from a cheap night market. A lot of times you need to earn the endorsement of the West before you can effectively penetrate the Asian market. In China, with higher incomes comes the demand for higher quality innovations and products. Harry Hui is the founder of Clearview Partners, a Shanghai-based private equity firm keen on the innovations popping up in China, which are demonstrating a competitive edge with foreign imports. Structurally, the country has evolved. Uh, economically, it's no longer a low-cost export model, but in fact, uh, it's going to be driven by domestic consumption. At the same time, we're also seeing a lot of innovation that's homegrown and domestic-led. And I think in the long term, you're going to have to ask yourself the question, why am I not in China and why don't I have a presence there? Even investors and entrepreneurs based in New York who came to this event have seen their perspectives turned to the potential of China's growing spirit for innovation. There's so much activity in New York right now, but my scope is a lot broader than that. It was interesting to see the perspective of how China is developing from, I believe, what they call the copycat culture into something where they have their own mark and their own uh, type of innovation. We're really excited about the wave of entrepreneurship. It seems that, like it's happening globally. I thought it was really interesting to uh, learn a little bit more about what's happening in China and some of the different business models there and some of the drivers of uh, growth there, in addition to how innovation is uh, placed higher. Taking back to the air, Silicon Dragon's next stop will be Sydney, Australia on August 21st. For more information from Sinovision English Channel, please visit us online at en.sinovision.net. Reporting for Sinovision Journal, I'm Lonnie Nelson.